Okay, let's talk about how we can find the area of a triangle when we are given all three sides. So for this triangle, we have this side being 11, this side being 13, and this side being 20. And let's just get to work. So first, we are going to add all the sides. 11 plus 13 plus 20. And this right here is just the parameter of the triangle. And then we are going to divide that by 2. And this is called the semi-parameter of the triangle. And it's usually denoted by the letter S. Now let's work that out. On the top is 44, on the bottom is 2. So divide, we get 22. Now we can actually write down the area is just equal to, we take the square root, and then we do S times the parentheses, and here we have S minus A, and then times S minus B, and then times S minus C. And the A, B, C are just the sides of the triangle. It doesn't matter how you label it all. I can call the first one 11 right here A, and then 13 as B, and C being 20. C doesn't have to be the longest side though. And now we can just go ahead and plug in the numbers. So here we have the square root. S is 22, and then here we have 22, minus A is 11. And then continue, 22 minus 13, and then 22 minus 20. So we have 22 times 11 times 9 times 2. Okay, in fact, we don't need to use a calculator. We can actually break it down. It's easy to see it that way. 22 equals 2 times 11. 9 is, of course, 3 times 3. So have a look. We have two of the twos multiplying inside, inside of the square root. So that would just be a regular 2 on the outside of the square root. Similarly, two of the threes together on the outside will be just a 3. And then lastly, we have the 11, two of them, so just multiply by 11. All together, we will end up with 66, and that will be the area of the triangle. Cool, huh? Now, many of you guys know, this right here is called the Heron's formula. It's extremely useful to find the area when we are having three sides. But now, there are two questions though. First question is, why do we do this? Can we just use one half base times height? Well, no, because this angle here, it's not a right angle. Even though it kind of looks like it, but if you really look at it, no. Not a right angle. So how can we show that though? Well, this is not a right angle because the sides do not obey the Pythagorean theorem. In this case, since 20 is the longest side, so let's set it up. We have 11 squared plus 13 squared. Does that give us 20 squared? No. On the left-hand side, we have 121 plus 169. So it's 190, 290. But on the right-hand side, it's 400. So of course, no. All right? So if the sides don't obey the Pythagorean theorem, we do not have a right angle. So we cannot say uh, base times height divided by two. All right, one fun fact though, notice how all the sides were integers, right? 11, 13, and 20. And the area also happens to be an integer. In this case, we call such a triangle a Heronian triangle when all the sides and also the area are positive whole numbers. Pretty cool, huh? Now, of course, the next question is why does the Heron's formula work? And of course, we are going to prove it right here, right now. Let's start with the triangle. Let's call this A, B, and C. Start with the fundamental. Area is one half base times height. And we can take B for the base for convenience, and then the H will just be this right here. 
And now the goal is to write h in terms of a, b, and c, so we have a formula in terms of just a, b, and c. And to do so, you can either use trig, or you can also do it without trig. In this video, I will use trig, which means I will be using sine, cosine, and angles. If you don't want to use trig, you can check out my other video from many years ago. I right, think will be in the description. So, to use trig, let's focus on this triangle right here in blue. And I'm going to call this angle theta. In that case, we can see we have the h being the opposite and the a being the hypotenuse. So, we can use sine. Sine theta is h over a. Multiply a to both sides. h is equal to a times sine theta. That's quite nice, I would say. Next though, hmm, I don't want to have sine theta because, again, I want to have just a, b, and c, right? So how can we do it? Remember, we were given a, b, and c in the big triangle here. And the truth is, we can use law of cosine because law of cosine works even the triangle doesn't have a 90 degree angle. So by law of cosine, looking at this angle, we will get the sum of squares of this and that, meaning we will have a squared plus b squared, and then minus the other side here, but you square that, and then all divided by two times the adjacent sides, so 2ab. So this is law of cosine. All right, so it looks pretty good. But now what's the connection between sine and cosine? Well, we can use the Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. So that means sine theta, move this to the other side and then take the square roots to both sides. So we get one minus cosine squared, take the square root, and usually we have plus or minus, but here sine theta will be positive because the angle theta is itself a triangle. So it's for sure in between of zero and 180 degrees. So it's for sure positive. Now we have all these ingredients and we can put them together. So here we go. Area is one half base times height. And the height is this. I'm just going to put this right here for the height, which is a times sine theta. Then, let's write this as one half. Instead of BA, let's write this as AB. And then for the sine theta, well, we know it's this. So I'm going to write it as square root. One minus, here we have the cosine square theta which is cosine theta, like this, and then square that. Cool. Now, cosine theta is what? Well, by the third one here, thanks to law of cosine, we can just put that in here. And technically we're done, because this right here is for sure a formula for the area of the triangle, and we just have A, B, and C. However, this is not how usually the Heron's formula is presented. So I will show you guys how we can do the algebra and end up with this version right here. So the rest is just a matter of doing the algebra. So let's have a look. Let's focus on the inside first. And this is the difference of two squares. So we can actually factor it. So note that capital A squared minus capital B squared equals A minus B times A plus B. And here, the capital A is actually one. One is the same as one squared, so that's that. And let's focus on the inside here. So firstly, we will have one minus. The second part here is just this whole thing inside, so I'm just going to copy it and then put it here. Very nice, huh? And then times one plus, and then we do the same thing again. Come here and then just copy that and then put it here. 
Okay, cool. And yes, I haven't forgotten the thing in the front, right? But remember the Hirons formula. Everything is inside of the square root. So, for the one half AB, I would actually like to bring that into the square root part as well. And to do so, let's have a look. Here, the one half is on the outside, but if you bring that inside of the square root, it becomes 1 over 4. And then, when we have AB outside of the square root, that's A square and B square inside of the square root. And once again, A, B, C, they are all positive, so this is good. Now, we can just multiply the insides of the square roots together. So one big square root here. We will have A square, B squared over 4, and then times the first parentheses right here. And let's just get a common denominator here. So we will have this. So 2AB on the bottom. And then right here, let's just multiply the top and bottom by 2AB. So 2AB, and then this is minus parentheses. Remember, it's minus the whole thing here. So the parentheses is needed because we will have to distribute the negative later. And then do the same thing for the other one. 2AB on the bottom, and then multiply this by 2AB, 2AB. So 2AB, and then plus parentheses, a squared plus b squared minus c squared. Okay. Now, it's a matter of how we simplify this expression. First, though, know, have a look. a squared can be canceled with this a and that a on the bottom, right? With two a's on the bottom. Similarly, b squared can be canceled with this b and that b together. It's quite nice. On the bottom, we have 4 times 2 times 2. I'm just going to put that as 1 over 16. Then, for the first part, right here, I'm going to distribute the negative to c squared. That will give us positive c squared, and I would like to write that down first. Then, I'm going to distribute the negative here. I will have minus a squared. And then this right here is positive 2ab, right? I'll put that in between. And then lastly, we have the minus b squared. Right, you'll see why we do this. And then for the last part, I'm just going to write it as a squared going first, and then plus 2ab next, and then plus b squared next, and then minus c squared last. Cool. Now, why did we do that? Well, it's exciting. Have a look. Still, we have the 1 over 16. But here we have c squared here. Not only we can factor our negative, and that would be minus 2ab, and then minus, uh, sorry, plus b squared, right? But this is really minus parentheses a minus b squared. So we can actually use the difference of two square formula again. And then similar to what we talked about earlier, right here, we can factor it as a plus b squared and then minus c squared. Whew. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here we have the square root. Still, we have 1 over 16. Now, we will have c minus a minus b times c plus a minus b. We use the difference of two squares for this part here. And then, as of for this part, we will get a plus b and then minus c and then a plus b and then plus c okay we're going to continue don't worry about the 1 over 16 yet here i just want to distribute the negative and uh, i will just have c minus a 
plus b and then here we'll have c plus a minus b and then continue a plus b minus c lastly a plus b plus c and remember we still have the 1 over 16 now i'm going to break down 16 as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and then i will just put this down right here as over 2 over 2 over 2 and over 2. why though now notice that we have a plus b plus c which is the parameter of the triangle and when we divide that by 2 that's the semi parameter of the triangle and we are going to call this to be s right and here's the beauty if you do this have a look let's take a look at the first part here in fact that's just what c plus b minus a over 2 right we can write that as c plus b over 2 and then minus a over 2 agree continue right here i can go ahead minus another a over 2 but i'm going to add a, a over 2 right afterward now why well it's because here a over 2 plus c plus b over 2 altogether the blue part is just s isn't it and then these two parts together is just minus 2a over 2 which is just minus a so that's just s minus a so in fact the first parentheses here is just s minus a and then similarly this is how you can do it when you have the minus a right and then c plus b over 2 that's s minus a for the next one we have minus b that's just s minus b and then here we have the minus c here and that's going to be do the same thing you will end up with s minus c and then of course the last part this is our s and let's put the s right in the front so i'll put that all the way here and ladies and gentlemen this right here is the proof of the Heron's formula and usually for a proof we draw a box and then shading like this and that's it